Hello everybody, welcome to Happy Souls. So today we have an incredible practitioner. So Ayurveda, do you know what Ayurveda is? It's becoming very, very popular. It's been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and it's about natural healing. When I heard about Ayurveda, I got so excited and I'm learning more and more and more about this every single day. So I wanted to teach you a little bit about Ayurveda and just give you a little bit of an introduction to it. So we have Dylan Smith, who is an Ayurveda practitioner. He's incredible, his knowledge is next level. He practices from Sydney, but he also comes down to Melbourne. And I recently had an incredible massage from him, which was next level. So welcome to Happy Souls. I can't wait to bring you back, Dylan. So we're here with Dylan, who is an Ayurveda specialist, and he's going to tell us all about his journey. This is something that's very, very, very close to my heart. Dylan, please tell us all about you. You're so incredible. You have so much knowledge. Firstly, what is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is a Sanskrit word. Ayurveda means life, Veda means knowledge or science. Mm. So Ayurveda is the science of life. Wow. It's such a broad and holistic science. Mm. And it's, they call it the mother of medicines. It's a science particularly incorporating medicine. And it's, it, it's really as old as nature. So it's, it's essentially part of the Veda, which is the laws of nature. Mm. And, and that is, that, that's basically, it's about how to live in tune with nature. And then when you live in tune with nature, you live in tune with your own human nature. And that's where perfect health lies. Mm. So Ayurveda gives you the tools, the foods, the herbs, everything, the conduct, the regime to be able to tap into your source of perfect health, which is your true nature. And to live from a place of, of just natural beauty, mm. really. That's, that's yeah. kind of the whole purpose of it is that we're all different and we all kind of, we can just heal our body basically mm. by a lot of herbs and things that you recommend. Now tell us about your journey, like why did you choose Ayurveda? I got into it um, when I was traveling in India and I was, went to a, an Ayurvedic clinic just mm. for a general detox and rejuvenation, just preventative and I went there and I saw how powerful the healings were on other patients, there were so many miraculous stories and um, it was just so, so powerful and I just, at that time, actually, I was studying architecture and I didn't want to do it anymore. Wow. Okay. So I got there and I'm like, I told the doctors, they're like, oh, come study Ayurveda with us. And I just oh. didn't think of it. I just did it. You did it straight away. Yeah. So I started there. And, and since then, I've been going to my teachers in India who are a family of doctors who have been doing it for generations. And I travel there to study and I come back to my practice in Sydney and also you know, come to Melbourne and other places in the world to practice. So... That's so great. we had Dr. Raju that was here a little while ago, mm. so he did some treatments. Can you tell us a little bit more about the treatments and things that are involved with Ayurveda? Because it's fascinating. Mm. Like Once I stepped into this world, like it just opens so many mm. more doors and it just makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense because it's, it's natural, it's simple, it's yes. nature. And that is where the healing can happen on yeah. a fundamental, deep root level. It's just going back to nature. and. I mean, the Raju family of one of the few families in the world that have this knowledge for generations and this pure knowledge. A lot of Ayurveda has been lost, a lot of the knowledge. Mm. That's why people have to be careful with what they read, what they read on the internet, um, books. So this is one of the few families and, you know, he, in Ayurveda generally, you know, we can heal with diet, we can heal with giving them a lifestyle program, we can heal with herbs. And then we can heal with specific treatments like body treatments or mm. other types of treatments. These are the main mechanisms and you know, the Raju family, they, they use all these mechanisms and some very special mechanisms and they're masters in pulse diagnosis, which is uh, one, the primary form of diagnosis in Ayurveda if you know how to use it. And you can go so deep into one's physiology and see early on in the disease process and get a very holistic, big understanding of what is happening in the mind and body more than any scan or and that's from taking a pulse because you've done mm. that my pulse diagnosis with me quite mm. a few times and mm. hormone health always comes up with mm. me and you do that from my pulse mm. like how does that even how like that's it's incredible it's 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 a nadi it's a channel which gives so much information mm. and it's just you know our blood it takes about two to three minutes for the blood to circulate into every cell of the body mm. so the arterial, the radial pulse on this artery has information on everywhere in the body. And the pulse is, is our 
it's our heart and our heart is our feelings yeah. and our emotions and when we store memories so the heart gives blood and manifests in the pulse as information and that that has so much information you know what my teachers what the Raja family can read are just unbelievable um, it's really a, a lifetime of learning and practice but um, yeah it's it's just a very valuable tool for those who want to get a deep understanding of what's what's going on in their body what's the root cause of an issue especially for those who you know may not know what is what's actually causing the issue or some uh, health issue where they can't quite put their finger on it they've tried so many modalities and it's also a healing mechanism the pulse yes. and it's because it puts you back into your body and it reminds your body of its, its true nature which is health and you can get all of that just from the pulse yeah it's absolutely incredible it's now in ayurveda we have a lot of doshas so there's three doshas can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about them and mm -hmm. you know i know i've been um practicing as a vata and i know that you do say that everyone's dosha changes all mm -hmm. the time but we mm -hmm. can be predominantly one at each stage in our life or mm -hmm. you know that changes a bit so can you tell us about them like mm -hmm. what are the doshas well the doshas are just a summary of the five elements so ayurveda says everything in the universe is compri comprised of the five elements which is space, air, fire, water, earth. Mm -hmm. Every person, every plant, every herb, every food, every object is all comprised of the five elements. And everyone, and it's just about balancing these. And Ayurveda has said, made it simple, five elements, but then it's made it even more simple and made it into three doshas, mm -hmm. which is vata, which is space and air, pitta, which is fire and water, and kapha, which is earth and water. So these doshas are, are just a summary of the elements. And Ayurveda uses Balance, use these doshas to balance. So if someone mm. has an imbalance of one, they'll use a food of an opposing element to balance that, or a herb of an opposing element. So, yeah, but as, as you said, it's, people should not be too rigid mm -hmm. with, you know, claiming, okay, I'm vata, I'm only <laughs> going to do vata things, I'm only going to mm. eat vata, pacifying foods, but it always changes with the season, mm -hmm. with what's going on in your life. Mm. Maybe you just flew in from somewhere, maybe something happened in a relationship. So you need to be more flexible and not so rigid attached to your dosha and, and be with the season primarily. Then you can adjust to your body type if there's a strong imbalance. Yeah, so something that I've been practicing with, with Vata, like, you know, I found that's really good for my body is eating a lot of warming food. Mm. So I can't have anything raw anymore. As soon as I even eat an apple or a banana, mm. my body's like, mm. eh, no, no, mm. it has to be cooked food, which mm. I find absolutely fascinating. But then. Um, you know, the other doshas, that's more more salads and raw food and mm. yeah, and I've, I've found that to be really, really great for my body. Mm. Um, so what are some other practices that people can do every morning? Like I know tongue scraping mm. or, a, you know, a self body massage. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about them? Like how if people do want to incorporate different elements into mm. their life, what are mm. they on a daily basis? Well, uh, the daily routine is a big thing in Ayurveda and yes. You should do this daily routine to live in tune with nature and live in tune with nature's day and enjoy it. So for the first thing is get up, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> get up out of bed. But when we should get up yeah. in, it says the Brahmin Mahurta, which is a time before sunrise. Mm. It's called the Brahmin Mahurta, the time of totality. Mm. Brahmin means totality, Mahurta means time. So it's a, it's a time before sunrise where everything is more towards transcendence, everything is more calm. And if we get up with that, that, there's so much energy then. It's actually mm. the vata time. So the dosha is also dominant in times of the day. So vata, which is air and space element, is dominant before sunrise. So if we get up with that air and space element, then we get that for the day. Mm. We get that creativity, that clarity, that um, lightness that comes with the air and space element. Mm. So we've got to get up before sunrise or with sunrise. And then, rather as opposed to sleeping in, and everyone listening to this probably knows from experience, the more you sleep in, the more you stay in bed, the more sluggish you will feel. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the kapha element. That's the earth element, the heaviness, the mm. sluggishness. So the more you sleep in, the more that sluggishness sticks with you. Although you're in the bed for longer, you will feel worse. Whether if you get up with sunrise, that energy is, is with you for the day. So that's the first thing, get up at the right time. And for that, by the way, you have to go to bed before 10 o'clock. Yes, Because again, the doshas are, are dominant in the yeah, night time. it's like you get a second wind after 10 o'clock. Exactly. Yeah. All the fire kicks in the pitta after 10 p.m. Yeah. And that's when the body's metabolism starts moving, the mel melatonin starts secreting, um, which we want to be asleep for, and for mm. proper rest. It's not so much about how many hours you sleep for, it's about when you sleep. So between 10 and 2 is the vital time. 
And then, you know, exactly as you said, scrape your tongue. You know, when you wake up, you'll see a coating on your tongue. That's just toxins from the day before manifesting on the tongue. So scrape that off early as soon as you get up. And then, you know, you can do the self-massage, which is anointing your body with oil, whether it's sesame oil in winter or coconut oil in summer or a medicated oil. You know, it's like moisturizing your body, but applying oil and giving yourself a massage. That has made a huge difference yeah. to me, just that one, like even before having a shower. So yes. it's be generally before, before shower. shower, isn't mm. it? It's made a huge difference to Good. everything. I, I don't know. It's yeah. phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's, it's very powerful. You know, your skin yeah. has more nerve endings than anything. Mm. So to pacify and ground the nervous system, it's fantastic for sleep issues. I guarantee you, do it before bed, it will change your sleep. Mm. Um, and you know that can be done morning or evening, whenever they, whenever someone has time. Um, and you know, moving the lymph, moving the blood. It's it's like a shower. You know, we bathe ourselves. We also got to anoint our body with oils and move the lymph and the blood mm. and you know, enhance our skin physiology so we can absorb vitamin D and uh, feed the micro microbes on our skin, so many things. And that's, that's really an essential. And then there's, um, and there's, you know, the diet in the day and there's, there's other practices, but, but a mm. key one is the massage and getting up early. Yeah, right. And what about um, oil pulling? Is, is oil that... pulling is great, yeah. You're yeah. just swishing half a teaspoon or one teaspoon of oil in the mouth for 15 to 20 minutes. It's one of the easiest ones because you can do it whenever, as long yeah. as you're not talking. So <laughs> during your self-massage. It's really hard for me. <laughs> oh no, it's really easy. Doing during your self-massage, yeah. while you're in the shower, while you're cleaning the house, because it doesn't have to be in the morning, it can be any time. Yeah. And that's, oil is lipophilic, which means it literally pulls toxins from the whole head, neck and throat. And especially the bad bacteria in the gums and the teeth. People have prevented root canal with oil pulling, um, wisdom teeth getting pulled out because it reduces the inflammation. So it's a really easy practice and that's a great one. Um, definitely for someone with oral issues they should be doing, mm. but anyone is just a general preventative for, for teeth and oral health, but thyroid health, um, so many, whole head, neck and throat. And does it matter which oil, like coconut or sesame or sesame any other Sesame is oils? the best, otherwise, which is not on the, it's coming to the market in the Ayurvedic products is, is medicated oil pulling, mm. um, which, which I sell, but uh, it's hard to get good quality one. But, so the best is medicated oil pulling, but otherwise you get a, just sesame oil, cold pressed. And what about the thing that we put up our nose, the oil? That, like, what's the purpose in the? Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about that? Because like, there was a time there for a little while where I was getting oil up and it mm. felt great, no, but you, you don't understand it. why, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually, uh, you know, it's one of the most important things now um, is just is exactly that, putting oil on your finger and another one and sniffing it to the, up the brain really. It's, the nose is the gateway to the brain so it's, it's nourishing our brain and activating the neurotransmitters and the hormones and lubricating the brain with, with a medicated oil really. Yeah. Otherwise you can use cold press sesame oil and it's, it's mainly for the brain, it's for the penile pituitary gland it's for the, all the sensory organs. It's to protect the lining of our sinuses, which is like a filter to environmental pollutants. So it's good protection from allergies and pollutants in the environment. Because we're constantly breathing in all this pollution that yeah. we don't even realise yeah. that we are all the time. And it's lubricating. This is the big one is, you know, looking at computer screens, being around wireless yeah. devices, it's drying out our brain. And now we have an mm. epidemic of Alzheimer's and dementia and other neurodegenerative disorders. It's now big taken over as the biggest killer for females over cancer is neurodegenerative disorders and it's becoming the norm you know people people say you know it's normal for their father or their grandmother to go into an old age home mm. with dementia but it's not natural that should not be the case your senses should minimally deteriorate dementia should not be a natural thing it's not a normal thing it's becoming the norm but so the nasya really helps in that lubricating the brain and maintaining youthful brain and proper neurotransmitter function so that's, it's really essential now and, and as a prevent, preventative measure to brain degeneration. Wow, and this has been around for what, 5,000 years? Like this is nothing Even really older, new. Yeah. It's, it's been no, around no, no. and it's becoming, it's, it's coming back up again, isn't it? Mm. It's kind of, well, it's, I mean, so it's becoming more and more popular every mm. single day and more people are more interested in mm. Ayurveda because it's, it's, it makes sense. It really does make sense. Mm. Is there anything that you recommend? If somebody is interested in Ayurveda, mm. what do they do? Who do they go to? Like, how do they learn more about it? Find a local Ayurvedic practitioner, um, and you know you can s see my website. Um, you can see other. We'll put books. it down here for you. But um, you just got to be really careful with reading Ayurveda on the internet and reading books, even if yeah. it's by a doctor from India. 
because there's so many so many misunderstandings mm. and confusion so yeah the best is to when you're studying Ayurveda really question what you're reading and just have a reliable source you to know make sure you go to a, a qualified practitioner yeah but not just qualified like someone who has knowledge passed down to them from an authentic pure source because mm. um, there's yeah I mean I can I can give you some other websites like lifespa.com is a good one um, you know Deepak Chopra is good mostly mm. so yeah these are some. now I had a massage from you um, a couple of days ago and <laughs> It was the most phenomenal massage I've ever had. Like, my girlfriend Leah told me about it. She was like, it's going to blow your mind. I was like, how can a massage blow your mind? Aren't they all the same? It's not the same at all. Like, no. what? Well, first of all, what's it called? How do you pronounce it? Abhyanga. Abhyanga. Why is an Abhyanga massage so different to other massages? And oh, I don't think I can ever go back to a <laughs> masseuse now. It's phenomenal. There's a few things. One big thing is the oils. So we use specific mm. medicated oils and a lot of it because oil really is, the skin is a powerful way to give medicines to the mm. body. There's so many semiconductors and receptive um, s cellular structure mm. that take in herbs. So that's, mm. and with the strokes of the Abhyanga, it gives these herbs and feeds your body and your tissues. So that's one thing. It's working mainly on the nervous system because your skin has amazing. all these nerve endings. So you feel that, that amazing um, feeling of mm. bliss and it just really grounds you and brings you back. And, um, you know, we, I also work with marma points, which are like energy points or where acupuncture points come from. So it's like uh, junctions of mind and body. And is everyone's the same or is it all different? Marma points? Yeah. yeah, everyone has the same marma points, but mm. every, people will have different, they'll be in different states and different people. You know, some will have some points in balance, some. So working with those are very powerful. Mm. Um, and you know, moving the lymph, moving the blood. These are the main differences. Between oh, it's incredible. I <laughs> recommend everyone go get one of your massages because that was nuts. Um, so Dylan, thank you for joining Pleasure. us today. You're so full of knowledge and I follow you on Instagram and all mm. your stories and I love what you're doing. You're forever traveling the world and just gaining more and more knowledge yeah. and we just adore you. So okay. thank you for coming down. And Pleasure. yeah, so where do you hang out most? Like where are the places where you Will you spend a lot of your time? Is it Instagram? Is it your website? Mm. Email? Instagram is where I post the most knowledge. Yeah. Um, and then I have a newsletter out. And I've just launched a podcast, the Vital Vader podcast. <gasps> Amazing. Um, which is really fun. And I've got some really good stuff coming up and already mm. on there. Um, and then I've got a blog on my website. So, yeah, Facebook. Lots of things. knowledge on there. And then my and clinic's in Sydney. And I sometimes come to Melbourne to treat. Mm. And also um, Europe starting to go in the summers. And, if there's one thing that you can suggest everyone start doing, what is it for uh, like to practice something Ayurveda? Sipping hot water. Amazing. <laughs> yes. So you're instead of drinking normal water and definitely not cold water, just sip hot water, plain mm. hot water. And the hotter the better, and it's about frequently sipping it. Not about how much water you drink. Frequently sipping hot water throughout the day is the best. And why? Because it melts the toxins. Okay. It's like Amazing. you wash use hot water to wash gre grease off dirty dishes. Same with the intestines. The hot water will melt the toxins and flush it out the body. And definitely no cold foods or cold drinks because that will just put out your digestive fire. But hot water is the best purification technique. Amazing, and it's so simple. Yeah, like, and, and those who think it's, you know, oh, that sounds weird. No, but you'll, no, no, you'll no, get I've used been to doing it and you months. won't want to get No, it's not weird, drink. it's great. Yeah. yeah. You won't want to go back to cold. It's Amazing. It's Dylan, thank you. Pleasure. We adore you and I want to give you a hug and thank you for coming. Well, Aww. You. If you want some more interviews like Dylan, please just subscribe because we've got so many more coming to you and it's very, very exciting. So Ayurveda, please, Dylan is the master and please go on and have a look because it's fascinating. Goodbye everyone. Happy souls. <laughs>